Hi, I'm Melissa from polkadotchair.com and I'm excited today to kick off our Valentine's Day quilt along. It's February 1st, which means Valentine's Day is just a couple of weeks away. So what better way to celebrate than with a little bit of Valentine's Day inspired sewing. So for this project, we are gonna be making my Heart of Hearts quilt. And I'll drop a picture in uh, to the video so that you can see it because it won't all fit on the screen. But the Heart of Hearts quilt measures 53 by 53. And one of the unique things about this heart quilt is that it is made using a five inch pre-cut stack of fabric. Um, most of the time people refer to these as charm packs. And what they are, are little packages of fabric already cut into five inch pieces. And the benefit of using this besides saving time is that you get all of these fabric prints in one package and it's an affordable way to get a lot of different kinds of fabric um, without having to buy quarter yard or eighth yard cuts of all of the different prints in a line. This fabric is my Mint For You fabric uh, with Riley Blake Designs. It came out in December of last year and it is inspired by those punny, funny Valentines that I knew when I was a kid. And it's just got all kinds of fun, bright um, heart uh, prints, I guess is a good way to put it. Um, but you can kind of look through there if you want. You don't have to use this fabric for this quilt, obviously. It's up to you what you would like to use. Um, someone asked if they could also use a jelly roll. Um, I don't have a jelly roll of it for you, but I do have one of Sparkler. Um, so it's sometimes called a jelly roll, Riley Blake calls them roly polies, but they are two and a half inch wide long strips times the width of the fabric. And yes, you could use a jelly roll because we're gonna cut these pieces in half, which would give us two and a half inch strips. Um, the only downside of doing this versus a pre-cut is that you'll have a lot of extra fabric with this. So if you have another project in mind for this that you think you would use those leftovers for, then I would definitely say go for it if that's what you prefer. You can also use a 10 by 10 inch pre-cut pack. Um, again, same issue as you would have with the two and a half inch roll you're just gonna have a lot of extra fabric. So just whatever it is you can find, or maybe you've got one of these in your fabric stash at home, you've been wondering what to do with them, you can absolutely use it for this quilt because everything gets subcut. So this is 10 by 10, I mean, just, it, it's like four of them. So you can see it's that much more fabric. For the background fabric, I don't know how this is gonna look because it's white and camera, video cameras don't like white. Um, we are going to be using my sparkler fabric. This is my basic with Riley Blake Designs and this is the white. And what it is, it's a kind of a different take on a solid fabric. It's got a little bit of texture to it. Um, it's got some gold sparkle in it and it kind of just keeps things from looking too stark, which are which I like, especially when I'm working on a quilt like this that has a lot of negative space. So in this case, negative space would be places where there's not like um, a quilt block or a specific design detail because this quilt has lots of borders of white. So I think that it kind of gives a little more texture and a little more interest to use sparkler for that. Um, if you don't like the white, the bleach denim and songbird also look really pretty with it too. For this project, we are going, you're gonna need a pattern. Uh, this is my Heart of Hearts pattern. You can buy it packaged like this. A lot of quilt shops have ordered it, so you can maybe ask at your local quilt shop to see if they have it. You can also get it from me um, digitally. And every time I post a project with a quilt along, I get the same comment over and over again. Where do I find the instructions? So in the comments, you, I don't know if you know this, but YouTube has a comment section. And above the comment section is details. And usually 
the details is not is collapsed by default so you have to click on it so you can view it and in the details section there's a whole bunch of notes and in that I can link where to get the pattern where to get the fabric how to get to my site um, how to get in contact me with me and stuff like that so make sure you double check um, the comment section I guess it'd be the comment section the detail section of the video so that you know where to get the pattern so this first video, I am gonna walk you through some of the prep steps to do before you start sewing your blocks together. Um, I am going to sew, I'm going to sew you, that's funny. I am going to show you um, how I cut my fabrics and give you a couple different options for cutting the background fabrics. And then there's a couple of preparatory steps that you're gonna to wanna to do cutting wise to your five inch stacker. So I'll cover those in the video. If you are brand new to quilting, um, I definitely cover some basics with rotary cutter and cutting mat. If you've been quilting for a really long time and you have your favorite way of cutting fabric, then you can fast forward those parts, but I would recommend watching the parts um, where I talk about how to get the most out of these charm pack pieces in the quilt. And with all that being said, we are ready to start cutting. I'm gonna switch over to the overhead camera so that you get a good detailed view of my cutting mat and my sewing machine. And let's get going. If you have questions, drop them in the comments section and let me know. All right, let's jump in. We are going to start with the cutting the five inch um, pre-cut stack. Um, you're gonna need your pattern. There are instructions in the pattern if you're using yardage. Um, which I'll let you follow along if that's something you're doing, but we're gonna cover this in um, the video. So first thing is you need a total of, let me make sure I'm doing this right, 38 pieces. Every manufacturer makes these a little bit different. Um, this particular one has 42 pieces. So I'm gonna open this up. So I need 38. I have 42, which means I just need to take four out of this stack that I don't want to use. So since I designed the fabric, I know which four I'm going to pull out because they're just not going to show up as well. Also, if you know this fabric, this quilt has white background fabric and there are some white prints in here like these. Um, if you don't want to use them, just find something in your fabric stash, just a simple red or pink fabric, and you can do that. But right now, I know that these two and these two are not going to show up super well in that white background, so I'm going to pull those out. Those are going to be my four that I'm not using. I'll just put these in a pile. Actually, I have like a little um, basket I keep at my sewing table that I use on my leftover pre-cut, like if I have leftover pre-cuts from a project. Um, so... That's just a little tip for you. So you, these are going to go in the bucket. All right, now I have got 38 pieces of pre-cut fabric. All right, so I have here 38 pieces of pre-cut fabric, and these fabrics need to be sub-cut. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do, and it's up to you how many of these you want to cut at a time. Usually you can do about four, but you need to cut them to four and a half inches tall. And it matters that it's tall because if you notice, this is a directional fabric, so you don't want your heart going that way. Um, before you do this, I will say just double check that your manufacturer, if you are working with directional fabric, that all of the pieces are facing the same direction. So like in this one, make sure all these are facing up, which they are. Um, these kind of tend to stay together really well, so I do like to try and cut them all at the same time just to kind of save myself some time with cutting. Um, there are a couple ways to go about this. If you, you can use your cutting mat and you can measure over four and a half inches, line up your a half inch mark on your ruler and then cut right here. You can also come over on this side, line up your half inch here, double check it on your ruler and cut it that direction. It's up to you. I, for some reason, I work backwards. I cut, I read, I'm right-handed, but I always cut left, 
left to right. So I don't know. Anyway, all right, so that is cut to four and a half inches. And then the second thing you need to do, again, it's up to you whether or not this is the two and a half inch ruler, um, which makes this pretty easy. And just gonna cut that to two and a half inches. So now I have pieces that are uh, two and a half by four and a half. It's important at this step that as you cut these, you keep them in separate piles because you're going to have right heart, right hand side of your heart and left hand side of your heart. So just keep doing that and keep cutting all of your pieces until you have cut the entire, oh, excuse me, keep cutting all your pieces until you've cut your entire um, pre-cut stack. All right, now that you've cut your pre-cuts, um, keep them in two separate piles and set them aside. And we're going to move on to cutting the background fabric. I've made a quick change to my background fabric. Uh, the quilt features white sparkler, but no matter what I did, I couldn't really get the white fabric to show up well on camera, and I wanted you guys to be able to see what I was working on. So there's a couple of different ways to cut these pieces. You're going to need a lot of two and a half inch and a lot of one and a half inch squares. Um, so there's a couple ways to do this. One way to do this for our two and a half inch pieces um, is, so I, you've got three yards of fabric here. Uh, mine's on a bolt. I think it's easier to work in smaller pieces. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna cut some of my two and a half inch pieces here. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of math. Um, this fabric I've checked, I have 40, you can't see it all on the camera, but I have 42 inches of usable width, not every fabric I have that. I need 76 two and a half inch pieces. So for, if I'm just gonna do a little math, show you how I, this is my process, and I, maybe it will help you out. So I know that I have 42 inches usable, and I need to cut a two and a half inch piece. So um, two and a half goes into 42, 16, Point eight times. You can't use obviously an eighth of a piece, so 16 times, which means I can get 16 two and a half inch squares from one two and a half inch cut of this fabric, and then I need a total of 76. So how many times does 16 go into 76? So 76 divided by 16 is 4.75. Um, you need to, I'm going to round up just to be safe, so I'm going to go 5. So 5 times 2.5 is 12 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this yardage 13 inches because I'm gonna round up. So I'm gonna come over from this mark here, which is 33, and I'm gonna come back down to 20 and cut 13 inches. Then I'm gonna take it over to my iron and I am going to starch my fabric. This is the starch that I like to use. If you don't like aerosols, this comes in a pump spray, um, but this is what I use. I think that you get much more accurate um, cuts and much more accurate piecing if you take the extra step to starch your fabric. But obviously I have like three yards of fabric here. I don't want to starch all of it. So that's why I did the math to figure out what I need to subcut for this. And anytime I am cutting lots of pieces or like this, I'm kind of distracted while I'm cutting, I do wear a cut glove. 13 inch by 42 inch piece of fabric. I'm going to starch it and press it and I should be able to get all 76 of my two and a half inch pieces out of this piece of fabric. All right, the fabric is starched. I've zoomed out the camera as much as I can, but I, what I have is I have my piece of fabric here. I've made sure my selvage edges are even and I have starched it and let it dry. Probably should have let it dry a little bit longer, but I need to get this done. Okay, so two ways to do this. You can come from this direction on your and use your ruler to measure two and a half inches, two and a half inches, two and a half inches. I use the mat. Um, I realize that's kind of controversial, but it's just what has worked for me. So I'm going to square this edge off. Then without, I'm going to try and be very careful. And I'm going to switch this around so I can know where my half inch is. So I'm going to line up the half inch mark on the ruler 
with the inch mark on my cutting mat. And this is two and a half, not one and a half. So I've got, and then I count over one, two, and a half. And I know from my math that I need five strips. All right, there I've got five two and a half inch by width the fabric strips. What I like to do, and this is why I have the cutting glove on, is now I like to cut it the other direction, leaving everything in place and being careful not to move my ruler. Um, hopefully I can do this without getting my head in the picture. <laughs> we'll see. So um, I am going to start on the one inch mark. Hopefully I'll have enough, but I think I've, I've cut extra. So... Now I've cut it this direction. Okay. Normally I use the other side of my mat also, be, but this side I don't use as much and it's cleaner for pictures, so that's part of why I'm doing it. So this direction I've got half inch marks coming down. So I've started at 21, which means I need to come down to 18 and a half, which is right here. No, I don't. It's right there. It's hard to do math at the same time. And that's 21 and a half, not 21. It's easier on the other side. So there's two and a half. And then, so there's 10 squares there. And then I'm gonna come down another two and a half. Alright, so I'm finished. Now I have all of my two and a half inch squares. Um, I will probably go through and count and make sure I counted this correctly. Um, the next thing you want to do is do the exact same thing but with your one and a half inch squares and refer to the pattern so you know how many one and a half inch squares that you need. And then, ne uh, not next week, on Friday we will start um, piecing our blocks together. All right, I know I said we were done cutting, but I wanted to show you how to do this working from the other direction. So I've got my folded piece of fabric here, and you can't see it in the camera. I'll squish it up a little bit so maybe you can see it. It's got to go pretty far. But I have gone in and just trimmed off the folded edge of my fabric. So here's the fold. Salvage is up here. So I have a raw end right here. So what I'm going to do is I know these are inch and a half for this one. So I'm finding the inch and a half mark on my ruler. I'm going to put the cut glove back on. If you can't see this one, you'll see the next one. And then I'm cutting across. I'm going to move these out of the way. You should be able to see this one better. So it just kind of depends which way you want to work. Um, a lot of people prefer this method because you use the measurement on the ruler instead of the measurement on the mat. What happens with your using the mat measurement is after a while of using your cutting mat a lot, the shape will kind of distort a little bit just from all the multiple cuts and the ruler is just a little bit more accurate. But just find a method that works for you and use that to cut. And definitely, um, oh, see, now I just moved that. <laughs> so I've got a couple of choices. I can put it aside and cut it later or I can try and line it up. My experience shows me I never really line it up right. I'm going to put it aside and I'm going to cut that after I'm done with the stack. All right, and just keep doing that until you have all of the required one and a half inch squares that you need for the quilt.